Welcome once again to Love Life Love Boat and welcome on board Friday night as we take advantage of a late summer weather window and visit a somewhat tricky but stunningly beautiful East Coast port. We also ask why people are spending more than £150,000 to buy a garden shed on the beach and we get to talk beer, bikes and fish and chips. And so, on a beautifully warm Tuesday afternoon, we left our berth before passing under Basquiel Bridge and then slipping very gently through the piers out onto a completely calm North Sea. The journey down to Southwold wasn't far and wouldn't take us long, but with such gorgeous weather we were in no hurry. For many, Southwold is just a holiday destination with a lovely beach, but it's steeped in maritime history and for centuries it's maintained a harbour where fishing and boat building have been the primary source. Its harbour entrance is notoriously difficult due to the shifting and shoaling sands and as a result it was one of the first towns in 1841 to maintain its own lifeboat. Even today the entrance is difficult and you really must have a good passage plan before you attempt to enter. Although Southwold is very well known to me, I'm entering here at very low water with a very strong ebb. I have to be careful, my track has to be accurate, as complacency is often the thing that will catch you out. Have a look here, we're not pushing in through the piers, but we're choosing our pathway carefully and we're still being pushed around with the ebb. We'll then be making a slow journey down through the harbour to our waiting pontoon where I'm greeted by the harbour master with the usual banter. show you why you should know Southwold Harbour. This water is running out here at an incredible rate. Our speed over the ground is 4, through the water 6.1. That's a massive current pushing you out again. And then once you're in the harbour you need to cut over towards the right hand wall, otherwise you'll find yourself shallowing out very quickly in the channel. The harbour itself is quite unique. It's still a working fishing port and also has a very busy commercial boatyard which looks after maintenance and restoration on site. 
In between those, there are a number of other businesses like fish and chip sellers, bars and artisan craft sales. Whilst at one end of the harbour, there's a wonderful pub serving great food and great beer. And at the other, the Alfred Corey Museum, where that earliest lifeboat has been restored and is open to the public. There's also a foot ferry that takes you across the river as well. And it was on one of these days where we were just walking along the harbour and we bumped into these guys. And I was super excited to see these Triumph motorcycles ridden up from Essex and Hertfordshire. I was lost as a former biker in that biking world just for a moment or two. And boy, didn't those bikes look good. The walk from the harbour to the town centre takes 15 to 20 minutes, but it's lovely taking you across pasture land and an open golf course right into the heart of town. We wanted to go and check out some of the maritime history, look around the place generally, and also have a look at the seaside. With its narrow winding streets, and historic buildings, it's no surprise that Southwold has become the destination of choice for film and television producers in recent years. Dramas, comedies, and even the most recent film, The Dig, were filmed nearby. And so you may find Southwold is far more familiar to you than you possibly imagine. They've got the cannons lined up and ready for when we're leaving Southwold tomorrow to try and blow us out of the water, I think. The lighthouse, at 31 metres high, dominates the town. It was constructed between 1887 and 1890 and it has served tirelessly since as a warning to sailors and definitely harks back to the maritime history of Southwold. Southwold has always been a prosperous fishing port and as a result the Doomsday Book records a tithe of 25,000 herrings a year to be paid to the Manor of St Edmunds but undoubtedly the father of Southwold was William Goddill who bequested much land and property to the town allowing them to effectively become lords of their own manor. Today it's one of the most desirable locations in Suffolk for property with prices very very much higher than those surrounding. So much so that seafront beach houses are selling in excess of £150,000 each for what is effectively a shed on the beach. The amazing Victorian Pier once a landing stage for steamships from London stands proudly out into the sea. Sadly, we didn't get a chance to visit on this occasion, but it's somewhere we definitely want to visit in the future. It had been the most wonderful day, but it was now time for us to make our way back to the harbour, tuck ourselves away in the pub, get something to eat and a few drinks ready for the return journey the next morning. And so, on another beautiful morning, we slipped our lines and made our way back down through the harbour and through the harbour mouth and out onto the open sea. The sea was flat and we were going to enjoy the journey back, although it did get a little bit choppy later on. For a number of reasons, we decided we were going to head back towards Lowestoft and head inland to the Norfolk Broads again just for a few days. We were going to meet some friends, celebrate a little, but most of all, we were just going to enjoy the week that was to come. And you ever wonder If days like these last With one another With the feeling past Would you find out with me If 
it all starts to crumble I'll search the pieces For a hope or a mumble It's not If it's my fault, I'll lose the footage. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> if we know what's best for one another, are we just another prize? Just waiting to crumble If we search the pieces Would we be bitter Yeah.